Thompson. Occupation? Deputy Sheriff of Salt Lake County. How long? About 14 years. Directing your attention to August 16, 19, 1975. On or about that day, did you have occasion to know one Theodore Robert Bundy? Uh, yes, sir. Did you know him prior to that? No, sir. Did you know at that time, and do you know at this time, what his occupation was at that day? Uh, yes, I did. What was that? He was a law student at the University of Utah. Do you know what his occupation was in 1974? I believe it was a law student also. That's all I have. Bundy? Say you knew Theodore Robert Bundy on August the 16th, 1975? Around that time I was acquainted with it, yes sir. Around that time? Yes. On that date? You say I'm not positive on the date. Oh. Can you give me <coughs> the benefit of your best estimate as to when you first? The first conversation that I had with you was August the 21st, outside the Salt Lake County Jail. That I'm positive. Did you ever met me prior to that? No, sir. I like it. That's all. Thank you. May this officer be excused? Yes, sir. I think you feel good. That's all I have on the motion, Judge. Do you have witnesses on the motion? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Harvey would like a couple minutes to confer with you before I take the stand. Right. We'll take a five minute recess and you may confer with your counsel as we talk to you. Everybody remain seated the judges out of the courtroom. We'll be in recess for five minutes.
was early in the morning, uh, approximately 2 o'clock. After you had been stopped, did Officer Hayward say anything to you? <clears throat> well, after the stop had occurred, I exited my car, and the officer, Hayward, uh, had left his car and approached me, and the first thing he said to me uh, was, why didn't you get out of your car and run? I would have, I could have taken your head off, or words to those effect, words to, words to that effect. Did he ask you for your driver's license and registration? He did. I think he asked me a number of questions that, which intervened the request to for a driver's license, and I think he asked me uh, after his first comment what I was doing in his neighborhood, and to which I did not initially make a response. And then he asked me for my driver's license, which I got from the inside of my car. Did you produce a driver's license? Yes. Did you produce a registration? Yes. Did Officer Hayward advise you of your rights at that time? No. Could you relate to me the circumstances which took place immediately after you were stopped? After I gave the officer my driver's license, he went back to his vehicle, as I recall, and leaned in and pulled out the microphone that they use for the radios and came back to me and told me to go stand by his car which was approximately 10 feet in back of my car. He told me to wait there, and there was an officer, another state patrolman, who was already on the scene. And he told me to stay with the officer. He told the officer to keep an eye on me. Let me, let me back up a little bit. Was, was Officer Hayward in uniform? Yes, he was. Was he carrying a weapon? Yes, he was. Was the additional officer who had come to the scene was he in uniform? Yes. Is he carrying a weapon? Yes. How many officers arrived at the scene? Well, they they arrived and they left. I'd say that at any one time there were at the most that were on the scene at any one time approximately a half a dozen. Was uh, all in uniform? All except for Detective Andrak who arrived later, who was in plain clothes. Uh, what was the attitude of the officers towards you? Well, I testified as to Sergeant Haywood's initial reaction. After he told me to stand by his car, he proceeded to my car and walking, he began to walk around it, shining his flashlight through the windows and peering in through the windows. The officer that I was standing with next to the patrol car began asking me questions, asking me what I was doing in the neighborhood, why I was there, at any, so on and so forth. Did any of the officers read you any rights, advise you the right to remain silent at that time? No. Did anybody advise you of the right to have an attorney present if any questions take place? No. Did anybody uh, advise you that you had the right not to talk to us? No. And then Officer Hayward was looking in the car with a flashlight? Yes. And then what happened next? He walked, or he, I was, as I was standing by the car, watching him and listening to the officer next to me ask me questions. Uh, I watched him walk around the car and shine his flashlight in the car. He. He apparently was focusing on something inside the car for some time, or it seemed like some time. He opened the car door, entered the car, and I couldn't see what he was doing. He came back to me and then repeated his earlier questions about what I was doing in his neighborhood, why I was there, and then as I recall, he went to make another call on his police radio. Did, the, did Officer Hayward or any other officer at the scene ask you for permission to search the car? No. Did you give anyone permission to search the car? No. 
Had you ever been arrested? No. Did anyone tell you that you had a right to refuse to let them search your car? No. Do you remember the words being asked to you whether or not you minded if they looked inside your car? I can't recall a request to search my car and the words whether or not they asked me if they could look at my car is something I don't recall or construed as a request to search my car. Do you remember telling, them, telling any of the officers that they could look at my car? No. At any point during this incident, did anyone uh, read you your Miranda rights or tell you your rights? Yes. At what point was that? After Sergeant Hayward had searched my car and called in another officer, called in other, another officer to come in, and after my car had been thoroughly searched by the other officers, Detective Andract approached me at that time and informed me that he was going to seize certain items, items from my car and told me that he was going to attempt to get a warrant or a complaint or something of that type uh, against me for possession of burglary tools. At that point, Sergeant Hayward uh, and or another officer, I'm not sure, searched me for the first time, handcuffed me, put me in his vehicle, read me the rights off a little car he carried on his console, and drove me downtown to the Salt Lake County Jail. It was after the search had taken place? Yes. And after the items had been seized? Yes. <clears throat> Did you try to stop the search? No. Why is that? Well, I'd say I was afraid to, but that's not exactly the way. I mean, that's, it's not that I was quaking in my shoes. The, I, was, I felt that I couldn't stop them from doing what they were doing, that they were going to go ahead and do it no matter what I did. They were intent. Their questions questions from Sergeant Andrak and, pardon me, Sergeant Hayward and the other officers at the scene indicated that they believed that uh, I was involved in some sort of activity and they were hostile about it. The questions seemed hostile to me, indicated to me that they were going to do damn well what they pleased and I did not I You didn't see any point? There was no point. I, I didn't see how the heck I could stop a half a dozen uniformed armed officers from searching my car. They didn't ask you for your consent? No. Objection to Brock. <clears throat> Let me ask you to see if you have Do you have anything else? Um, I think that about covers it. All right. I have no questions. Mr. McKeever. Thank you, Judge. Just a couple of things. That's not the first thing you told Hayward, though, when he asked you what you were doing in the neighborhood. Did it? What? He asked you what you were doing in the neighborhood, and you didn't tell him right off what you were doing in the neighborhood, did you? I told him what I, I responded to his question. I understand. What was that response? As I recall, the response, I don't know when it occurred, uh, was that I had been in the neighborhood to drive and move. Good one. I said uh, my response to him was that I had been in the vicinity at a drive and move. And you told him the name of that movie, didn't you? Yes, I did. But you hadn't been to that movie, had you? Your Honor, I don't think it's material for the issue. Well, the question, question of credibility is always material, and these are questions that the court would be concerned with. I'll let him in. No, I haven't. Well, you started off with a lie to him. And you followed that up. Let me see if I understand your testimony correctly. You followed that up with another story, didn't you? You're alive, Jeff. But restate the question. 
Well, did you tell Hayward anything else after you told him that you'd been at the drive-in movie? You do recall your testimony during the courtroom proceedings in Utah, do you not? I'm not sure what you're referring to. I think you, I mean, really, it's a broad question. If you try to be more specific, I can help you out. Do you recall your testimony in Utah? I recall testifying in Utah. Do you, do you recall, you recall the drive-in movie story you told Hayward? You've already testified to that? Yes, sir. Do you recall the marijuana story? You know, I've checked. Yeah, let's go. I'm going to rule it. Uh, there's some reference to it in the opinion. Judge, excuse me, but I, this guy hasn't been talked about by either the officers at this hearing or by the testimony of the judge. He's on the cross-examination in the defense. We got a direct pinpointed question of issue of fact that the court has to. And that's, I think about it, question overruled, and you may proceed. Do you need me to freshen up your memory a little bit, Mr. Bundy? I think if you could read me, ask me the question again, I'm not sure what you're asking, but I can try to. I'm asking you kind of an initial question, and I don't mean to be confusing. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you recall your testimony in Utah? If you don't say so, and I'll try to refresh you. Well, if you could give me a specific question, I don't think it would be, be difficult for me to sit here and quote you verbatim what my okay. testimony was in Utah. I understand. I can appreciate that. Let me see if this refreshes your mind. Do you recall testifying that on the evening in question you were eating dinner and watching television until 12 midnight or 12.30, which time you decided to visit a friend? That upon arriving at that friend's house, you noticed the lights were out, you decided not to waken her up, and you proceeded to drive around for a while. You ended up in the Granger area where you decided to smoke some dope. Your Honor, excuse me, but if he's going to excuse, if he's going to ask me a question, I will object to the summarization of the entire line of questioning. He's going to ask me a well, question. Well, if, if I've sufficiently refreshed your memory, and say so, and I'll stop. You want to tell us about that testimony? Do you recall that, Mr. Do I recall the testimony? You apparently do. You just told the court there was lengthy questions and answers about that point. All I'm saying is that I, I don't recall the testimony specifically, but I can say that in general that I, that I can uh, associate what you're saying with the trial in Utah. Okay. Specifically, do you recall telling the court in Utah that you fled from the officer in order to get the smoke out of your car and that you threw the marijuana out the window during the chase? Yes. Now, back to this case. Isn't it a fact that you've done all of the research on this particular motion? Yes, such as it is. <laughs> yes, I have. Have you found some cases on the point? I found too many cases. And the point we're talking about is consent to search, isn't it? That's one of the points we're talking about. Are you familiar with what the factual basis would need to be for a consent search to be thrown out? Yes, I'm familiar with it. I am now. I wasn't then. That hasn't colored your testimony a bit. I think you'll find, well, no it hasn't. And I think you'll find, if you review my testimony in suppression hearing in Utah, that it's essentially the same. That's all I have, Jeff. Any you right? Do you have anything for Mr. Clinton? No, sir, I don't. Uh, you may step down. Any further testimony on the motion? I feel like I need to call Officer Hayward just briefly, Judge. All right. Well, Officer Hayward. Hayward. Sergeant, I guess he is now. No, sir. Step out of the witness stand, sir, and be seated. Previously sworn, Sergeant, the oath is still applicable. You may proceed, Mr. Thank you, Judge. 
Sergeant, are you familiar with the smell, the odor of marijuana? Yes, sir. How long have you uh, had some experience in this odor? I had uh, three years just prior to this date of alcohol and drug uh, enforcement uh, drug uh, drivers in the state of Utah. During the time you were in Mr. Bundy's car on this particular evening, at any time did you smell the odor of marijuana? No, sir, I did not. At any point during your search in the car or around the car, uh, trunk, engine, whatever, did you find any substance that resembled marijuana? No, I did not. At any time during your chase of Mr. Bundy, did you see anything thrown out of the car? No, I did not. That's all I have. And redirect? A re a cross, excuse me. Yes, sir. His report on your. We've marked the report. This one. This is. Uh, Just asking if that's the full report and if it's accurate. Sergeant Hayward, I'm showing you a document. List marked as defendants. Proposed exhibit A1 identification. I ask you to identify that, please. incident report of the the stop that occurred on August the 16th, 1978? Yes. Good offer this in the evidence. Be received without objection, out of order. No objection. That's all I have. Sergeant Hayward, now be excused. Yes, sir. Thank you for your good, sir. Vince, have anything further on the motion? Nothing further, Your Honor. State have any other rebuttal? No, sir. Right. Motion's closed. And gentlemen, I'm going to take argument on both of the motions to suppress. Uh, in either procedure that you want to go by, you may take the state to uh, put argument first. Go ahead. Judge, Motion to suppress what? Is this motion to suppress Nina Neary's testimony also? Yes, sir. Right, I'm going to have to gather my troops. Are you prepared to argue on this one first, then? John, I'm not prepared to argue the law beyond uh, generalities. I have a great deal of case material 
as I say, I have not had access to the library to, to streamline it, as it were. I would be willing to make a general argument, but we reserve the right to submit to the court a memorandum of... All right, I'm going to rule on both of them until in the morning anyway. I want to hear the argument on both of them this afternoon. There's no more hearing testimony. How about Picano and... Do that during trial if you want to, Judge. I, I thought we had reserved that for during the trial. Now, these are, this is all the testimony to be taken on the motion. Mm, yes, sir. No, sir, we have, some we have some statement testimony that you need to hear and uh, some more Williams rule. Well, we've got some Williams rule questions, but they primarily will be not test witness testimony, as I understand. You do have some short testimony. All right. Well, let's take these two motions to suppress from that order. Are there argument on them now, and then we'll... Judge, we give you a chance to get Mr. Haggard... Yes, uh, I think you should, and we're going to proceed now with the argument on the Granger, and Mr. Bundy, you may proceed. cases in that box and they all deal with consent search issues. Yes, sir. I'm sure that there's probably that many more that you've missed. And I've missed quite a few. We're only, we're only dealing with a, a couple jurisdictions. As I said, I'm going to argue the law broadly because I, I haven't had an opportunity to, to complete my research on the status of Florida law, although I'm familiar with the parameters of the consent search issue as they exist here in Florida and those as outlined by the United States Supreme Court and other federal courts. Well, we really basically set the stage. Uh, I'm sure you've read Bustamante. Yes, sir. Well, let's proceed with that and we'll go from there. And you're not going to be far wrong from Florida law. Well, I think the before I refer to the Bustamante case, I think it's important that the court be put in a position of determining whether it's Florida law that applies or the law of the search, the state where the search occurred. And of course, I would argue that from the integrity of this court and the integrity of the court of Florida, that the conflict should be re resolved and in, in the manner of adopting the law of the forum state of Florida to determine whether a consent and the search that we've heard testimony in today was freely, voluntarily, and knowingly given. Well, you've got more of a basic threshold argument as far as that is concerned. <clears throat> this court would have to take into consideration the rulings of the Supreme Court of Utah, Mr. Bundy, as far as the concept is concerned. And the only collateral attack, or something in the nature of a collateral attack, would be a federal argument. As this court conceives the law, I think the state of Utah has ruled on it, and it is a provision of the Constitution, as you're well aware of, concerning full faith and credit and the finality of the arguments as it relates to <coughs> seizure of the goods under the forum of where they're seized. This court would consider that the only possible collateral approach would be on the basis of some additional federal requirement, maybe not brought to the attention of the Utah court. However, uh, so that the record is patently clear, I am going to proceed with the concept that both arguments, or all three arguments, are in fact open. And I'm not going to close you out on that. Brevity has never been the keynote of this trial, and probably never will be. So uh, I'll, let, I'll hear whatever you have to say. Well, I think, and I will do my best to acquaint the court with issues 
that are directly involved in the search, which did not come to the attention, or I would, would, would tell the court that these issues did not come to the attention of the Florida Supreme Court, or the Utah Supreme Court. However, I understand that the court has read the Supreme Court opinion, the Utah Supreme Court opinion, and will simply direct the court's attention to the findings of Chief Justice Ellett. And Chief Justice Ellett did not find that the search ruled on by the trial court was legal. The findings, the legal finding of Chief Justice Ellett in State v. Bundy was that there was evidence sufficient to justify the judgment of the court. It does not speak to the standards of law in Utah or anywhere else as applied to search and seizure, and the search and seizure issue involved in the Utah case. I think what we have here is simply a badly written opinion, and one which is self-evident, relies on virtually no case law, and a very highly complicated appeal. And so I will say only that I don't believe reading of the Supreme Court opinion is dispositive or in any way persuasive in determining the legality or illegality of the search that occurred in the subject of this motion. Let me go to the Bustamante case because it's so often referred to, and because it's so important in consent search cases. And I think that this court must first recognize that in the Bustamante case, the United States Supreme Court narrowly decided the issues before it, and concluded that its ruling on whether an advisement was necessary.
hired you on the interesting ones that showed us the bundle. Yes, Sean. Yeah. Not That'd concerned be with the other details. Other than to show reading content, you know. Return off to the lady that you can. If we need to make photo stuff for them to the record, we'll give them. I don't want to confiscate it. Yeah, the one I'm returning is uh, Sunday, January 22nd, 1978, the Indianapolis Star, page 10, sec section 3. Uh, caption on it is Tallahassee Terror, police like clues to kill it. We'll see that you get the others with substitute photographs for them later. So we have this one just photocopied for the record? Yes, we can. All right. We certainly can. And it's an exhibit. Photostat and substitute the photostat for the original and return the original to the scenario. Mm -hmm. Ms. Mary, on all clerk is marking the other exhibits, I'll ask you and show you uh, what has been marked Defendant's Exhibit A1 for identification and ask you if you recognize. Uh, this newspaper clipping. Yes. Uh, and did you cu cut this out of uh, the Sentinel Star? No, I did not. Who who cut this out of the paper? I don't know. Uh, did uh, you and show? Jerry, you're shaking. Don't be upset here. Okay. Relax. Uh, did uh, you? There's no reason to cut it all the like No. Did you show this to uh, your daughter, Nita? The daughter would probably be the best answer to that, wouldn't it, Mr. Agri? I don't think we need to. Everything's all right, Mother. Relax, all right? Take Thank care you. of yourself. All right. <coughs> you may step down. Thank you, Show you what's been marked. Uh, defendants' exhibits uh, one, two, and three for identification, and ask if you can a one, two, and three. Uh, ask if you can identify them as having seen them before. This one, no, I do not remember seeing it before. Which one is that? Uh, Number A one. All right. Um, this one, yes. This is the series I was talking about, where each one looks different. What number is that? A two. And A three. I don't remember. It it's, looks like the same series there. Um, I might have seen it. I don't, I don't really remember. But I, I might have seen this one, but it's, it's the same pictures as this. Did your mother have any other pictures than these? Um, I don't know. Well, how long has your mother had these pictures? Um, she's had them for a while, for when the papers started coming out, but she kept them in an envelope. And after I had seen the series of six, um, I was advised not to look at any more pictures in the newspaper or on television. And so I stayed away from them.
you've identified uh, 82 is the six you saw? Yes. Well, that was prior, 82 was prior to you being advised or after? Yes, prior. What is the date of that, Mr. Haggard? February 19th, Your Honor. All right. Did Did you see all of the clippings that your mother collected? No, I did not. Did you see these that she brought here today? She's already I've I, I just she's answered. <clears throat> now, if she's seen any other, I'll let you inquire. Did you see any in this one that had sort of a profile? No. Did you see any in, uh, and that was A2, did you see any in A3 that had sort of a profile? No. Do you recall telling Detective Bodiford that you had seen sort of a profile on March 14th? Late. You call this question by Mr. Bodiford. Did you recognize him? Answer, I can't guarantee you I didn't see a good profile, but uh, she just showed me a picture, she referring to your mother, about two days ago of a sort of profile. Recall that? Vaguely. Was this the sort of profile that your mother was referring, or you were referring to on the phone? I don't remember that picture right now. It was in your mother's possession, was it not? Objection. No. That's no test of her recollection. What is the date of that? The date, Your Honor, is two days after Exhibit well, A2 never mind there. what A2 and A. What's the date of that? February 23rd. Thank you, sir. Call your conversation and your honor so I can refer to the one I referred to as sort of a profile is A1 for the record. Do you recall your conversation with Detective Bodiford? Um, yes, I remember talking to him. What did he tell you about having someone in jail down in Tallahassee? Check. Find out what you recall from the conversation first. Don't lead it through the thing. What do you recall about the conversation, Ryan? Um, the main thing, the, the main point I remember about the whole conversation was don't look at any more clippings. Did he tell you why not to look at any more clippings? Um, so I can have a positive identification and that the newspapers wouldn't sway my decision. Did he use the specific word taint? Pardon? Did he use the word, so do not look at any more newspapers so it wouldn't taint your identification? I don't remember. Do you know whether he discussed that with your mother? Objection. Did your mother tell you not to look at any more pictures in the newspaper because Detective Bonifer had told her that? Objection.
Do you remember your mother showing you any newspaper photographs in the car? Vaguely, yes. And she pulled out an envelope? No, I don't remember the envelope. Where were you driving to? I believe we were going home. We were downtown Aurora somewhere and we were driving home. Did you say to her that it looked like the nose, Objection. but it was still not a good profile? Objection. Did you make a comment as to whether or not it was a good profile to your mother? I remember. Your Honor, that assumes that she said there was something like that. I'm asking if she was. There's no establishment that it's taken place, Mr. Hager. That's the problem. You were in the car, and your mother showed you some photographs, right, Ms. Neary? Yes. A photograph. A photograph. A clipping. I, I don't remember which one it was. A photograph. No, no. That's a photograph or a clipping. A clipping. All right. Was it a clipping with a photograph on it? Yes. And was it a partial profile? I don't remember the picture. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Do you recall making any comments about the nose? No, not specifically the nose. Do you recall making any comments about whether or not it was a good profile? No, I don't remember. I remember what I do remember is glancing at it and I was tired of it and I just said I don't want to see anymore. I don't want to make any judgments. Do you recall uh, saying anything to Detective Modifer about any resemblance of the newspaper photographs to the man going out the door. She's already established your members of conversation. I let him ask. I answered. Yes, ma'am. Uh, could you repeat that, please? Yes. Do you recall making any comments to Detective Bodifer about whether the newspaper photographs resemble the man going out the door? No, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Do you recall saying that uh, you could not promise that you could make an identification to Detective Bodifer. No, I don't remember. Let me ask you if you recall this statement and this uh, reply with Detective Bodifer. Detective Bodifer, do you think that might, you might be able to pick it out? Your reply was, I might, I can't promise anything, but I dot, dot, dot. Do you recall that statement no. and reply? No, I don't. And continuing, by Mr. Bonifred, what about if you were to see a live lineup and your reply, well, again, I can't promise anything, but it could dot, dot, dot. Do you recall that? Um, no. Pardon? No. And your reply again, you know, I hate to promise anything, I can't, you know. Do you recall that? No, these statements just being taken out of context. I'm not sure what I do in that file. It's a read out of context, make your objection timely. I don't have a copy of the document he's reading from, Mr. Simpson.
Do you recall discussing with Detective Bonifer uh, a partial profile from the newspaper? Sustained. We've been through that. Do you recall this statement by Detective Bonifer in this reply? Right, but so far the pictures you've seen, uh, you haven't counted him at least? Yeah, but the one when we had his nose turned a little bit did the best for me, you know. Resembled more than any of the other ones. But the other ones were hard to tell because they had like six different pictures of him, all different, you know. Do you recall that discussion? No. Mr. Harvey says my secretary called him. There was some emergency in my office. I'm not going to go over there. We've got a recess now, and uh, I've got a judge's meeting to go to. In spite of the importance of this proceeding, I still have some administrative duties. Um, the reason we started half an hour earlier, I'm going to be in recess now until 2 o'clock. Court will be in recess. I'm glad to remain seated in the church of the courtroom. Court will be in recess until 2 o'clock.
If I left this year, 